Welcome to the Papa Rockstars podcast with Anya Bohm, where we talk about all things paparazzi, team training, suggestions, interviews with elite leaders, and more, all to help you grow and explode your paparazzi accessories business to rock star success. Hello and welcome to the Papa Rockstars podcast. My name is Anya Bohm and I am your show host. Today we're going to be talking about how to get more sales in your paparazzi jewelry business. Are you wondering what you can do to increase your sales in your paparazzi business? Well, today we're going to chat about how you can do just that on Facebook and with social media. Now, before we get into that, head on over to paparockstars.com. That is where you're going to find the show notes from today, all typed up, ready for you to highlight and mark and circle things. You'll be able to listen again, share it with your friends or your team members, and grab the show image that I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. Now, again, that website is paparockstars.com. Now, that show image, there's actually two for today, and we're going to talk more about it in in a little bit, but just know one of them says 11 at 11, and it's got a heart. It's kind of a cute background. The other one's kind of more like a party background, and it says 12 at 12. Now, you're probably wondering what that's all about, but you'll find out in the show today. Well, let's jump into today's training. Have you ever asked a kid to clean their room? Some kids will go right away and clean their rooms, make their bed, vacuum, and even wash their windows. But most kids, however, they're going to find something else to do really quickly. It usually takes at least two or three times, at least, of asking my kids to get them to take that long trek up the stairs to tidy their rooms. So why is it that we think posting just one time on Facebook or social media is going to result in thousands of dollars in sales. The truth is it takes constant, persistent exposure and reminders that you're around for people to claim and purchase items or even to join your team. Truth is, it usually takes about 10 different exposures to a company, idea, or product before people are ready to pay attention. 10. Most people give up right around the sixth time, sometimes sooner, They're only missing out by just a few more tries. Truth is, Facebook is a fickle beast. The algorithm keeps people up at night, trying to figure out when to post, trying to figure out how to post. But no matter how you, how good you get at posting during high traffic times, there will never ever be a time when you reach 100% of your friends or your group members. Maybe their kid's soccer game went late. Maybe their mom called. Maybe they just got stuck in traffic, or maybe there's just a really good show on TV and they decided to watch that instead of being on Facebook. It's just life. Things have changed a lot over the last few years with social media. It is an amazing way to show and sell jewelry to customers all over the country. But first, they have to see it. So let's talk about ways that you can get more exposure for your jewelry. This will increase your sales and increase your business. For the rest of this training, I'm going to call these touch points because they're possible ways to reach out and be seen by your friends and by your group members. First, let's talk about variety. When you're posting on your personal wall, be sure and have a good mixture of personal and business. Pictures of your kids playing on the playground and then a pile of your orders ready to be picked up and then maybe a post about your party tonight and another one about you going on a date with your husband. Keep it casual. Keep it non-spammy. You want your audience engaged and enjoying your posts so they feel like they want to interact with them. The more they comment and like your posts, the more relevant Facebook will think your posts are. The more relevant the more it's going to show them to your friends and family. It's almost like Facebook is saying, well, if you like the last three posts Julie did, then I'm sure you're going to like this one too. So the more that you get your friends and family commenting and liking your posts, the better chance you have that your posts are going to be shown to them. Ask questions, ask for advice, play a game like a this or that, have them help you accessorize an outfit. The more they interact with your posts, the better. Now, I'm sure some of you are concerned about posting pictures of your kids and mixing that in with your business posts. Just change your settings. Set your business-related posts to be on a public view, and then when you choose to post pictures of your kids, you can set it to be on friends only, or even choose a friend group 
that can just see them. You can set groups for your friends and just set it so that like your friends and family can only see those pictures. This is going to help protect your kiddos, but it's also going to keep that business separate without having to have a separate profile, which is actually against Facebook policy. So we don't want to do that. Now let's talk about your groups. Groups are a great place to gather your customers and shoppers into one place. They are extremely effective in selling jewelry because Facebook assumes that your group members want to be there. If they didn't, they'd leave the group. But just like on your personal timeline, it needs to be interactive. You want them commenting, liking, reacting to your posts as much as possible so that you're seen as relevant. You can encourage them to comment on pictures of jewelry they like without claiming them, post games and contests. Some consultants do like an outfit of the day or a wear it Wednesday post where customers can post pictures of themselves wearing the jewelry too. There are so many ways to keep interaction up so your customers see more of your posts that you make in your group. Check out our image archives at paparockstars.com for some fun games and interactive post ideas to get you started. Okay, now let's talk touch points. If you post an album of items for sale, what are the odds that you, your group members are going to go in and clean you out? Shop it all. It's not very likely. Just like the example earlier with the kids cleaning their rooms, you need to tell them multiple times that there are amazing pieces for sale, both so that you can make sure that Facebook is actually showing it to them and try to catch them when they're online. Posting an album one time is not going to do this. And then leaving that album up in your groups for weeks and months isn't doing you much good either. This is one touch point. I'm going to say it again. This is one, one touch point. You need a lot more than one. You can post individual pictures to your group, but be sure you're only doing about 20 a day so that you stay under the spam radar and that, and be sure that you're adding different descriptions for each one as well. You can post a necklace one day. You could post bracelets another. You could do Blue Tuesday or Purple Wednesday. You can do a live box opening and then post set on, sets on Friday. Post stock photos one day and then take pictures yourself the next. Or p- uh, p- pick five or ten pieces a day to highlight and post those. My favorite lately, and this goes back to the show images we just talked about a few minutes ago, is 11 at 11. I post 11 pictures of jewelry at 11 a.m. my time. Sometimes I sell a piece or two and sometimes I don't, but almost always it reminds customers that I'm here, that I'm rocking my business, and then they come over to my group and see what else I've posted lately. I like to post 11 pieces because that's also 11 different pieces that I could sell. I've seen other consultants post like a one piece of the day, but what happens when that sells? Sure, you've sold one piece and that's more than you had in your pocket before, but that's $5 in your pocket. If you posted more items, you could sell more too. You see what I'm saying? You can't just post one time and then cross your fingers and hope that it sells. Post it. If it doesn't sell, take it, take it down and post it another way. If that doesn't work, try again and again and again. I post some pieces week after week after week and they're still there in my albums. And just as I think that I will be holding on that piece until the end of time, (laughs) someone claims it. And then all of a sudden, two or three more people want that exact same piece. It happens all the time. Your perfect buyer was probably just not online, or maybe she was waiting for payday, or maybe she hadn't bought the perfect top or dress or purse to match that piece. Or maybe she hadn't even met you yet. You should be meeting new customers all the time and having them join your shopping group or follow you on Facebook. They haven't seen what you have in stock. To them, it's all new. In my sales group, I post individual pieces almost every day of the week. I try and do a joke or a game every day, my 11 at 11 post, and then sometimes a thought or a picture of my kiddos. Then I do three live sales a week and an album sell. You see multiple touch points. Another great way to create multiple touch points is to delete and reload your albums. I do this at least once a week. Now let's get a little techie again. Facebook notifies your groupies one time when you post an album. Once. If you add more pictures to the album, does it notify them again? Nope. 
if you update an album by deleting the items that have sold, do they get notified again? Nope. (laughs) Once you've posted it that one time, Facebook is done telling people about it. So they may see it in their newsfeed for a day. And if they come over there to your group, they might be able to find it if they scroll through. But do you want to base your business on a maybe or a might? No way. You got to take control. Give them more touch points. The way to do this with an album is to delete it and to reload. Now, I'm not saying to do this every day because that might be seen as spammy, but you do need to change it up. I change my albums every week. And the way I do this is one week, I load them by style. So necklaces, earrings, bracelets. The next week I do it by color, black, red, blue, green, changing things up every single week. Another bonus to deleting and reloading those albums, it's going to create a sense of urgency. If you let your customers know the albums are coming down on Tuesdays and then you remind them on Sunday or Monday, they're more likely to stop and shop before you take them down. Maybe they have a birthday coming up or they need to make sure that they have a necklace for something else. Maybe they're worried they're going to miss out on something if they don't shop now. Either way, they're shopping. Leave up albums. If, you, if you're leaving up your albums all the time, you're creating no urgency. So let's look at it this way. Black Friday shopping. Do they have specials like that all day, every day? Nope. Just once a year. Because if they offer those sales every single day, do you think people would stay up for days or stand in line in the freezing cold just to save a few bucks? Not likely because they could sleep in have an amazing breakfast, chill with their friends and family, and still get those killer deals. It would lose its appeal. My favorite grocery store has sales every single week. But if I want to grab that milk and the grapes that are on sale this week, I know I have to go before Tuesday at midnight or it might not be on sale next week. You see? Urgency. So clear out your albums. No one is seeing them anymore anyways. Then load them up again. Facebook will notify your groupies that you just loaded an album with pictures and bam, another touch point. Trust me, it is worth the time and the little extra effort to boost those sales. The next point I want to talk about is be you. The last most important part of increasing your paparazzi jewelry sales is to be you. There is no one out there in this big old world who is just like you. You are amazing. I've seen consultants dress up, sing songs, tell jokes, do a movie trivia, play bingo. I've seen consultants give out genuine compliments to every live viewer and make them feel so loved. Some consultants are all business and others are putting on a show. Whoever you are, let that brilliant, awesome, unique personality shine through. Your customers will come back again and again because of you. You are your customer's personal shopper their jewelry lady. And the more you can build that personal connection with your customers, the more loyal they will be to you. The absolute worst thing you can do is to try to be somebody else. For example, on my live shows, I get a little silly. I like to crack silly jokes and laugh with my customers. I share stories about my kids and my husband and my life. And sometimes I even make silly faces. Now for an example of this, you're going to have to visit the website or download the show notes page, but I've included an example in those for you to see. My customers, at least the ones that have gotten to know me and tune in again and again, they know that I get kind of silly. They expect me to make glasses out of earrings that I'm holding up or tell the cheesiest jokes they have ever heard. That's who I am. If I were to switch that up and start acting like someone else, they would feel like something was off. They would know something was off. So be you. Be the best you that you can be. When you let who you are shine through, your customers will love it. So now it's time to come up with a plan that will work for you. When and how are you going to post? How are you going to increase those touch points for your customers? And what can you do to bring more of yourself into your business? The answer to these questions hold the key to growing your sales and your business. Thanks for listening in this week. Have a rockin' week. Bye-bye.